is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical and Automot Automot Automotive, Automotive Engineering um, at IILM CET uh, in Greater Noida. Uh, so Ankita has um, conveniently uh, recorded, pre-recorded a, a session for us. Uh, so she will be, I'll, I'll just be broadcasting her YouTube video, but she will actually be joining us for a live Q&A. Um, she just was concerned that her internet might not last the distance for the presentation. So please, um, you know, feel free to put, pop your questions into the Q&A box um, because Ankita will be joining us. Um, oh, and Ankita, your video just works perfect. So that's great. Thank you. Good, good morning. Um, <laughs> yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> depending on where you're joining us from. Yeah, um, I'm from right, India. So, so namaste and good morning for all of you. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so I am just going to uh, play your video now. Yeah. And we can probably both turn our videos off. All right, hi everyone. Uh, just wanting to get some tech help, please. Uh, okay, I think I'm all right. <laughs> um, hi, do you, do you need me on here, Alex? Do you need to hop off? No, I think I'm all right. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm okay. So we've actually got 15 minutes left until the end of the session, Ankita. Um, and okay. uh, we currently, does not look like we have, any questions for you? So I think you, it's, um, it's it's a bit uh, research area. <laughs> um, well, I mean, please feel free to tell us more more about it. I mean, uh, yeah, your presentation was was you didn't use the full fully allocated time, so yeah. so please feel free to to if there was anything more you wanted to add, you can do that now. Actually, for uh, let me yeah. Uh, yeah, now it's there. So yeah, actually, for, uh, uh, for designing, you need to have only the knowledge of the designing. Either you can use by uh, Fusion 360 or uh, AutoCAD or any designing software. And then uh, you uh, once you created any design, then you need to import that design with the help of some uh, uh, G codes or uh, where uh, this uh, 3D printer can interface with your design. So uh, for that, you need a host repetitor or Cura or any other open uh, source softwares are already available. You directly convert your design to G code and your printer can directly print that. And uh, um, for designing, because uh, once I was into in this uh, designing implants and uh, I have connected uh, so many orthopedic surgeons for that, so uh, I got to know about one crucial thing, which I would like to share here. First thing is that you need to follow certain designing rules for that. Means you need to have a certain base for that. Once you are creating any design, you need to design from the, uh, from, uh, by considering it as a uh, uh, solid base, just imagine a solid base and then start designing. That is the first thing which you need to uh, analyze before designing anything. So uh, when I was uh, designing something, now I was uh, actually stuck so many times. But uh, then I got to know about this designing rule. And after that, I'm designing. I'm connected with uh, many orthopedic surgeons in India. And um, I'm assisting them. And I have actually um, masters four students in this field and uh, one student is completing masters under my guidance in this um, doing FEA analysis in uh, hip implants. So that's that's the all I want to share with you all. So uh, any other questions? Sorry, I was actually 
Uh, my apologies. I, I was talking and I had myself on mute. You'd think we'd be able to work these things out and it's my fault, not yours, Ankita. Um, okay. So uh, the, the first, we do have some questions had, that have come through. Uh, what The first one is, uh, what kind of printer are you using for orthopedic parts? Uh, what, what, please, can you repeat it? What kind of uh, printer are you using to print these orthopedic parts? Uh, you can design with the help of FDM 3D printer or uh, you can, if you want to create, a, uh, uh, if you want to create some patient specific, then you can go for SLA based uh, uh, 3D printer and DLP based 3D printer for that. Okay. Um, I think you're logged in on two different accounts, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just creating a little bit of feedback. Um, no, fine. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and the next one was, uh, can you customise the implant part via uh, using real CT scan data from the patient and transform that into a CAD file to be 3D printed? Yeah, for that, Diacom software is the best one. And uh, uh, you can have some open source softwares too. Uh, but I'm not sure because I haven't used them. And um, so, yeah, Diacom software is the perfect one where you can get the whole analysis of the board and uh, what kind of dimensions you need. And you directly import that file to .stl and uh, you can design whatever you want to design. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, how do you decide the materials for 3D printing of orthopedic parts that are compatible and non-toxic to the body? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, there are certain criteria to select the material for that. Uh, like, um, material should be biodegradable and biocompatible, and it has a good mechanical characteristic or mechanical properties. So these are the criteria which we actually look uh, while uh, selecting any material. If the implant is on the body, it is placed on the body, then it is fine. Then we can go for whatever it is the requirement. And if it is placed inside the body, then we need to conduct in vivo analysis for that. And we need to sh get sure about uh, like uh, titanium is the best one. For in if we consider as a metallic material, so titanium is this one, but there are certain ceramic materials too, like uh, hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite has a similar combination uh, uh, as we uh, have in our bones. So hydroxyapatite is the best one. If uh, we want to replace any bones for that, and my PhD work is uh, actually related with the hydroxyapatite, I am creating a new design for my uh, new kind of material, novel material, uh, uh, by merging hydroxyapatite, carbon nanotubes, and um, aloe vera. I I don't know whether you guys know about aloe vera. It is a kind okay, of jelly. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, it is a kind of jelly thing, which uh, it has a very good uh, biocompatibility. So I'm creating that novel uh, material for that, for for Fantastic. further analysis and for further things. Yeah, yeah, sounds really interesting. Um, do you see an increase of use of prosthetics as an option for um, preventative medicine uh, for people who have various forms of arthritis at such a young age to slow the progression of the damage? Uh, I'd also yeah, add, I, I think, um, not just arthritis, but also diabetes. So I know, like, you know, patients with diabetes will use this as preventative medicine, prosthetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can say that uh, because I'm not very sure about it. I guess you're you're more sort of on the orthopedic side, right? Whereas, you know, prosthetics yeah. are... Um, <laughs> Orthopedic is inside the body. Prosthetics are outside the body. That's a that's yes, an yes, important yes, distinction to yes, make, yes, right? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yes, all body parts, but um, certainly uh, got different requirements around levels of certification and um, you know ease of adoption and and the whole rest. Um, I'm going to wrap up now. Um, I know that April had a lot of questions to answer, and so this might be a really good opportunity over the next eight minutes until. Um, our panel, which is coming up, Materials for Industrial AM Applications, moderated by Dr. Erin Brody, which I'm really looking forward to. 
Um, that will be coming yes. up in eight minutes. So now we've got a bit of an opportunity where we can actually just turn your cameras on if you if you want to. Uh, if not, you know, go get a drink of water or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much, Ankita, for, for joining us and thank you for your presentation. Thank you, thank you, Alex, thank you.